bought this Snap-on toolbox for a bargain price. You can see it is very greasy. The box has had a hard life. There is some surface rust. This is the Brisbane flood in March 2022. Lots of businesses went underwater. The cleanup was huge. The box is maybe from the late 80s, so it only has another five years of payments owing. You can see Brisbane had two major floods in 2021 and 2022. Let's assume this box was under at least two floods. This snap-on box was under a few metres of water. I got the snap-on box with a safer box as well. The boxes still have the tools and accessories inside. Some of the tools will clean up well and can be used. Stay tuned to see this Sid Chrome 51 piece socket set I found inside. Minus one. Of course it's the 10mm socket missing. Lots of rusty chisels, hammers, tap and die sets, etc. Even some snap-on Allen keys. Removal of drawers and slides. These are rusty bent feeler gauges I found inside one of the drawers. These bent feeler gauges will be perfect for what we want them for later, to remove the drawer slides. When the drawer slides out, this lug stops them. The tab on the runner hits the lug. This is how it is done on the snap-on runners. You can see how the bent feeler gauge used. The feeler gauge has to slip over the lug to let the tab slide over. The slide mechanism on the safer box is easier to release. You can simply press inside the hole to allow the drawer to release, just there. Cleaning mud and grease. You can see the mud inside the safer box. All of the runners need to be cleaned as well. A water-based detergent is used to scrub the mud and oil. This is the safer box. There is a lot of grease from the flood because it was in a mechanics workshop. There is a lot of oil on the slides. We want the box clean for painting. We want the drawers to slide smoothly. More water will not hurt it. Let's just wash it out with a garden hose. There is a lot of baked on grease and thick black stuff that needs scraping off. The safer box has holes where the previous owner has been draining water. As you can see it's quite watertight. Replacing hinges on the safer box. I remove the old hinges and replace them. The hinge here was completely snapped off. I replace the safer hinge with a stainless steel hinge.
This hinge was okay, but difficult to find a matching one on the other side. The problem with stainless steel is drilling it. It's extremely hard. Hopefully the holes line up with a safer box. Keep a few drill bits handy as they blunten easily on stainless steel. Line up the holes. So the holes don't line up. Exactly. Oops, it's not lined up. Use new rivets to attach the stainless hinge. More cleaning. A degreaser is used on the slides. We're using a blade here to scrape off stickers and flaking paint. Back to the snap-on. Drawers are all out. Lots of debris and oil inside. Lots of paint overspray. Runners are caked in grease. At least it's a snap-on. I use CT18 truck wash degreaser. Paint the whole lot with this water-based degreaser. Let's let it soak for a while. Water blasts the whole lot. Even this did not get all the grease and mud off. The runners have to be completely removed. Mud and rust stains mostly come off. This takes a long time as there are so many drawers. The safer drawers get the same blasting. There's a lot of rusted stain to remove. The main rust is from the tools, not the boxes. Both boxes have little body rust. All stickers are removed. We don't like stickers, unless they're our own. Bits of old chewing gum and flaky rust spoil the look. And the side of the box has to be cleaned as well. A few bolts are missing that hold the wheels on. box is starting to look more red. The wheels are removed later so we can clean them up. Time for some panel beading. This badge makes the box worth about five times more than a normal box. Panel beading 101. Time for some panel beading. This old box must have some stories to tell. An adjustable spanner is used to straighten bent edges. Take out the obvious dents. The box won't look perfect. But it will have good bang for buck value. A large hammer gets out some base dents. Some of the hammers and chisels we're in the box as well. Free tools.
This railway line anvil is great as a dolly, but Barbie is also good too. Here I straighten out the face. Take out the dents and then sand the paint. This pneumatic random orbital sander is great. We are not sandblasting this box for cost reasons, but we want to blend the paint in. We don't want to spend more than more sandblasting than what the box cost. Get the old paint keyed so the new paint will stick. Cleaning up and painting the safer box. Remove all internal drawer slides. We need to push out some dents. I use this scissor jack to push out some dents because it's flat and you can get in on the edge. A jack can also be used in different planes. Remove sticker residue with citrus based solvent. Internal safer runners are removed for painting. Spray on degreaser. Use plenty of rags. The old grease and dirt will cause friction. A dirty snap-on box in the house can also cause friction. Wax and grease remover still finds more grease. So we've got it in the track here and you can see it brings up more grease. The box is wiped down with wax and grease remover. Rust-Oleum 2X Apple Red is used. Snap-on painting. Almost ready to be painted. The wheels are removed to clean them and assess rust at the base and take dents out. Replacement nuts and bolts are found to replace any missing ones. Here the box is the right way up. Wipe down with wax and grease remover. This is the base now. Spray the base. When the base has dried, we turn the box over. This is great paint and is very tough. You can see how much nicer the new red is. This project took about six cans of Rust-Oleum 2X Apple Red. A spray can holder would be a good idea. Make sure you wear a face mask to prevent breathing in paint vapors. The mask and the garage were pretty red afterwards. Only some of the inside was painted to prevent rust because you can't see inside. The paint is forgiving and does fill in scratches. 
The dents on the top will be covered over later. We have to hammer out the bent sections of the drawers. The, there is holes drilled by the previous owner to drain water. We had to hammer out the edges of the holes. Straightening the drawer fronts. Banging out damage from holes that have been drilled. Here a screwdriver scrapes out more grease. There's grease everywhere. This is flaking paint to grind back. There's the bent side to straighten. There's overspray here to hide. Here's some holes to bang out and straighten. This flaky rust is cleaned back. Front panels are straightened. This railway line anvil is used to fix the bent flanges at the front. Here we're banging out distorted hole edges and using that anvil as a dolly. We're using degreaser here to clean the drawers of thick grease. Have plenty of rags to remove the grease. We can only we can see why not to use oil to oil your runners. Some of the drawers even have holes drilled in them. Fixing the key locks. To get a locksmith to cut a new key is very costly. The cam lock turns the shaft here. We need this snap-on section. Remove the barrel with the section we want. The locking mechanism locks all drawers at once. Turning the rod moves the rear slider. We need the cam lock to turn the rod. I compare the snap-on and the safer cam locks. This is a set of four Kida-like cam lock barrels. The snap-on mechanism is drilled out. A screw is found that fits inside the snap-on part. It's got to fit in that hole. The screw is ground to fit inside the snap-on part. We need the snap-on part to not rotate at all. This is what happens if the snap-on part rotates. We accidentally locked all the drawers. Every drawer locked and trying to bang the mechanism open. I used one of these from the cam lock kit. We bend the tab up so it can engage the snap-on part. We flatten one side of the snap-on part. We use some solder to fill in the voids so the tab does not move.
Here is our new Camlock Fit the Snap-on. This is the Camlock damaged when the drawers were locked. Testing the new lock. Lubrication of draw runners. Cleaner runners slide better. You can see the dirt there. There you can see there's more grease to remove here. Get all that off. Here I use a lawn mower spanner because I want the angle. So we want to use it so that it presses this tab here down. I want to push this tab down. We're using this spanner because it's thicker. So this slips under to release the thick tabs. All drawer slides are removed. Remember those bent feeler gauges we found in the, the safer box? The bent feeler gauge is used to release the smaller tabs. It takes a little bit of a knack here. Got it. Back to the greasy drawer runners. Runners have to be individually degreased. So this is the way the runners started. We are now using a dry PTFE lubricant that does not attract dust. Adding some bling. The box is nearly finished but needs some bling. The top is still a bit rough and we need it protected. I had some flooring vinyl offcuts. I fitted the vinyl to the top and inside of all of the drawers. I found this in the clearance section at the hardware store. It's a flexible chrome trim. It's five meters. It's easy to fit to the edges of all drawers. Here I show that it's not easy. Five meters was just enough to do all seven drawers. Simply trim to length with a sharp knife. I made this copy snap-on badge to stick to the safer box. That's so it matches. Here it is almost finished. Remember the keys fit the upper and lower boxes. Very smooth now. I will respray the black drawers to freshen them up when I get time. Thanks for watching.